I am Fausto Spoto and I'm going to talk about our termination analysis for Java and for Java bytecode. Consider this example, we have a list with the next pointer. You build a list by providing the next list. You can also extend the list, which means that you add as many new elements as there are in another list. You can see the determination of extend depends on the termination of the loop that you have inside extend. Java bytecode is different from Java. It is the result of the compilation of Java. It is a low-level language, strongly typed, object-oriented. It has an opera stack for temporary values and local variables for more important values. It also uses an activation stack for recursion. This means that the Java bytecode is more difficult to reason than Java. For instance, it looks like this. This is again the extend method, and you recognize that the structure is very complex here. You don't see the loop anymore. The loop has been hidden by the if null ego to instructions. But we managed to reason on Java bytecode anyway. In particular, at this web address, we have developed an analyzer which proves termination of the methods of, the so of your code. What you have to provide is just the class file, so you don't need to provide the source code and uh, you will get a list of methods that will terminate in your programs. Consider that since termination is undecidable, you will find uh, some methods that, that terminate, but there will be other methods that terminate, but the analyzer will not be able to prove it. For instance, we call extend, we provide two distinct lists, and the analyzer correctly, correctly tells you that uh, all methods terminate, also the extend method terminates. But if we introduce a sharing, which means that uh, some variables might share some location, so that when you modify one variable, you also modify the other variable, then things are difficult. Sharing has been studied for logic programming, and more recently also for imperative programming. We have developed a sharing analysis inside our Julia analyzer, and this will help in the termination analysis. For instance, you call extend and you provide the two arguments which are two sharing lists now. In this case, since while you modify the first argument, you also modify the other, then the termination of extend is not proved anymore. And correctly, our analyzer will tell you that extend does not terminate anymore. Sharing is not the unique ingredient you need for termination. You also need cyclicity which means that some variable is bound to a cyclical data structure so that uh, iteration over that data structure will not terminate. It has been studied for logic programming and more recently for imperative programming as well. We have implemented a cyclicity analysis inside our Julia analyzer and the result of this analysis is useful for termination analysis. For instance, now we call extend with the first argument which is a cyclical list. Correctly, our analyzer will tell you that extend does not terminate anymore because it iterates over an infinite cyclical list. Conclusion, you need cyclicity and sharing if you want to prove termination of Java or Java bytecode programs. By using cyclicity and sharing, you can build a path length information, where by path length, we mean the length of the chain of pointers that you can follow from each variable. In the case of integer variables, the path length is just the value of the integer. We have uh, implemented the path length inside our Julia analyzer, and this path length information is then used to prove the termination of the program. Namely, it is used to translate the original program into a constraint logic program. And we have proved a theorem which states that if the constraint logic program terminates, then also your original Java or Java bytecode program terminates. For instance, the extend method is translated in the path length constraint logic program that you see below. The program is made one clause only, P. P is the predicate of the clause, and the constraint uses variables which stand for the path length of the original variables of the programs before and after each iteration of the loop. So now the problem is, how do we prove termination of constraint logic programs? This has been studied since many years, 
and uh, the idea is that you have to find uh, some uh, measure decreasing over a well-founded domain. This measure can be the value of an integer variable, can be the length of a list, can be the height of a tree, can be the size of a data structure, and in general, a combination of many of those measures. In particular, we use a tool to prove termination of a constraint logic program, which is called the bin term. And by mixing Julia with bin term, what we get is an analyzer which computes invariance on loops, applies the size change principle, detects a fine ranking functions, and finally proves the termination of most of the methods of your programs. In conclusion, at this web address, you can try our completely automatic analyzer to prove termination of your Java or Java bytecode programs. It is automatic, so you don't need to provide any help to the system. You only have to provide the class files without source code. In case you have problems, please let us know.